Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani at the International News Channel. After 20 years of war, the Taliban for the second time has swept to victory in Afghanistan. This past summer, as soon as all American troops left Afghanistan, on order by President Joe Biden, it took little to no time for the Taliban to take control of the country. This has led to immediate panic amongst Afghans as they trying to flee the country. While some have succeeded, thousands are still stuck there as of this moment. Meanwhile, reports of violence, of forcing women to marry Taliban fighters and so many more harsher realities have been flooding the media. Resultantly, the international community is fearful for the future of Afghans. Will the Taliban respect human rights? Will women be banned from education, work, government positions and other major parts of civil society? Will people be able to leave the country at all? Many such questions and concerns are being discussed in the global community today. Joining us today to talk about what's been going on in Afghanistan, we are joined by Canadian Afghans Ghazal Karim and Mehan Sawari. They are on the forefront of raising their voices to create awareness for human right abuses in Afghanistan. I want to thank you both for joining me today. Thank so you. right off the bat, what was your reaction to hearing about the developments in Afghanistan since the U.S. troops began to pull out? So, um, as I was following the news, it was expected that that would be the outcome if they left Afghanistan rapidly like that. But we still felt very betrayed, upset, or confused. There's a lot of confusion. But, uh, we do feel abandoned. And uh, after 20 years of loyalty of Afghan people mm. to the Western, especially to the United States, it was uh, pretty uh, difficult and pretty hard for us to believe that uh, our people are actually going to be left uh, in the hands of a barbarian group and uh, which we see the results now. The Taliban have been accused of destroying the culture in Afghanistan. In response, Haji Hekmet, one Taliban leader, told BBC News, control of Afghanistan has passed from one foreign hand to another for 40 years. We have lost our own traditions and values. We are trying to bring our culture back to life. So in your opinion, are the Taliban actually trying to bring it back to life or are they completely destroying it? Uh, well, it's obvious that they are destroying Afghan culture. Whatever they're bringing, they're claiming that it's original. They're bringing original culture back. It's actually, it's not. For example, the woman's clothing, it's very foreign to Afghans and the way of life as well is foreign. They're, whatever they're saying, it uh, has nothing to do with the truth. They're doing the opposite. That's right. Uh, they, uh, we're going backwards, unfortunately and uh, Afghanistan is known to have thousands of years of history. Mm. And uh, like Rizal John just spoke about the only woman culture, woman mm. dresses, woman jewelry that we have that has histories of thousands of years back. Our ancestors used to use these jewelries, use these styles, and uh, we cannot uh, allow a, s a group to come in, in our country and step over our history mm. and then tell our woman what to wear and what to not wear. This is part of our culture and uh, they do not represent our culture. At all. We'll come back to the women clothing in a bit, but in terms of education, under Taliban rule, male and female students studying in the same classroom are now going to be separated by a curtain. What do you think about that? About uh, separating, um, no doubt that Afghanistan is an Islamic country. People are all the people of Afghanistan are Muslims. Even right now, with the previous government, there was uh, universities colleges, schools that they have both male and females, boys and girls, separately sitting in the same classroom. Mm -hmm. And this is only ideology of uh, Taliban because Talibans are madrasa students and they look at Islamic way to the extremist way possible. Mm. And uh, this, uh, well, not only uh, it has its own effects because we were just stepping into a democracy. We were stepping to the op uh, people of Afghanistan just start seeing broad brighter days. Mm. And there is a lot to learn from our women, from our girls of Afghanistan with mm. all these talents. Mm. Now we cannot just hide them in the rooms or hide them into burqas and uh, control their lives. Oh, and uh, that's how the way that we see it right now. No. Do you yeah. agree? I agree. What I wanted to add that uh, even though it was not necessary to make the division, divide mm. the class by the curtain, but that's not the main concern of Afghan women. Mm. As long as they get to pursue their education, work, that's the main concern. Mm. On September 14, dozens of Afghan women in Tajikistan protested against the human rights violations under Taliban rule. 
There, they chanted, Pakistan, go away from Afghanistan and stop killing Afghans. As per your knowledge, what is the background behind these slogans? Uh, the message is very uh, clear. It speaks for itself. Mm. Uh, so basically why they're saying Pakistan get out of mm. Afghanistan, stop intervening. Yeah, it shows the strong involvement of Pakistan's invasion in Afghanistan, mm. as we see it in the past 40 years. Mm. People are fed up. We understand that millions of Afghans are inside Pakistan refused. But we also understand that politically ISI Pakistan is behind all these mm. problems in Afghanistan. All these ISI head members are all connected with Taliban and leaders from 90, uh, uh, 1990s until now. And they all have strong connections. And um, this is one of the main reasons that people of Afghanistan are standing, because we want Pakistan to stop supporting terrorism. Mm. Why are the terrorist organizations that be coming in Afghanistan and blow mm. themselves up into bazaars? blow our children up, blow our kids, blow our schools, girls schools, boys schools, mm. and commit suicide bombs anywhere that they could. No. And uh, we're not okay with all that. And Pakistan mm. could have done the stop this long time ago and mm. put pressure on uh, Taliban. But now clearly we see otherwise. Mm. They're choosing yeah. not to. Exactly. So uh, what I wanted to add, that they're not just slogans. They have truth and facts behind them. Mm. Um, they're not some made up slogans. As you know, the Prime Minister Imran Khan himself admitted that they funded Taliban. Mm, yeah. uh, Pakistan was a safe haven for Taliban. They got armed. So they got a strong support from Pakistani Pakistan. government. Mm. So it's very well known fact for Afghans. Mm. So that's why we chanting those slogans. No, fair enough. Yeah. And speaking of all the women and girls we've been talking about, the Taliban have repeatedly claimed that they have changed their attitudes towards women and girls. At the same time, they have created an all-male government. Is it possible for them to support women and girls with this type of government? Uh, clearly not. Um, whatever Taliban are saying, it's, um, they're contradicting themselves. And it's just uh, to get recognition from other countries. They want to be a recognized, legitimate government. Therefore, they're saying things that are not, they're not following up with mm. them. So under their rule, where they're trying to wipe women out of society, I don't see any support. Mm. They want to just be blended in the background, have no voice, have no involvement in government, education, or society. There's no hope for Afghan women under Taliban. Uh, like we've seen uh, from last week, uh, the woman, brave woman of Afghanistan who stood after the call of Ahmad Massoud, mm. the leader of National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, who's uprising against the Taliban, who's the resisting them right now in Panjshir mm. Valley. He uh, made an announcement and called everyone to stand against the Taliban. Mm. The first people who stood was brave women of Afghanistan. They stood up against the Taliban in Kabul city. They stood up in Kandahar and uh, Badakhshan. They raised their voice. F uh, two women in Badakhshan uh, province, unfortunately, got shot. Oh. And then uh, a lot of money women in Kabul, they've been caught in the video being beat up by the Taliban. They're screaming. The people are filming them. People are watching. There's a l money videos that spread around the social media. Same thing in Kandahar. Recently, they misplaced 8,000 families. And they protested against the Taliban. They started hitting a lot of women, too. So clearly, they're anti our women. And they don't respect women's rights. And uh, as they try to show the world that, hey, we have changed, but we can still see all these negative impacts, mm. even though they haven't fully controlled Afghanistan 100% yet. Mm. Now we can imagine what they do actually if they fully have the control and how our people will be inside a cage locked mm. and nobody is to save them. No save them. Adding on to that, so why do you think the Taliban claims that they have changed their attitudes towards women and girls while their actions are showing that they haven't? Or from what you guys are saying also, they haven't. Right now, uh, all the Afghan citizens are hiding inside their homes. No, no one is in the streets. Mm. The only people who came out in the streets was those who protested. Mm. And they got beaten up. They mm. got hit with shalaks by the Taliban. So there is no really not much change from Taliban from 1992 uh, until 2001. Mm. The same beard, the same AK-47s in their hands, rifles pulling at the women's faces, the same shalaks in their hands and hitting women in the streets. And we mm. see r r videos daily. Yeah, yeah, I want to add, uh, even though they haven't changed and they keep showing that they haven't changed mm. and they say the other they're otherwise, saying the, opposite, yeah. the opposite. So as I said, they're basically looking for recognition. They want international community to support them. They want mm. international community to 
business with them, mm. work with them, and they're also aware that if they openly um, torture people, abuse people, oppress women, they would be stopped. There, there would be intervention, international intervention. Because of that reason, they keep making PRs, lies, manipulations, mm. propag spreading a lot of propaganda. Mm. One online campaign resisting Taliban rule features Afghan women who are living outside of Afghanistan wearing colorful clothing. These posts feature the hashtags Afghanistan culture and do not touch my clothes. This campaign was a response to seeing women in Afghanistan wearing black burqas. One woman participating in the campaign said, I don't want to be identified the way Taliban are showing me. I cannot tolerate that. Another woman in Kabul stated, I cannot post such pictures or wear these kind of clothes here anymore. If I did, the Taliban would kill me. So according to you guys, why do you think it is important for women to be able to identify or be identified by their own culture given the situation in Afghanistan? Uh, well, I want to say that why Afghan women don't want to recognize Taliban imposed um, dress code. Mm. Because first of all, it's uh, foreign to Afghan, Afghanistan to an Afghan woman. And as well as, as you said, our traditional clothing is our identity. Mm. It's our representation. It has thousands of years of history. It was passed on from generation to generation. It has a lot of detailed work, delicate work. Hand so it's basically our culture. It's very important. Mm. Yeah, no, that's right. Because uh, uh, we, uh, that's not our clothing, mm. the, for example. Yes, Islam is our religion. Mm. We have Islamic culture and clothes mm. for women. That's mm. true. But let's take, let's speak about Saudi Arabia. Let's speak mm. about all these Arabic countries that they're all Muslims and they all dress stylish. They all dress colorful. Oh, yeah. They all have makeup on. They all have now the Taliban think that Saudi Arabian Muslims are not Muslims. Mm. Muslims in Lebanon are not real Muslims. Yeah. Women in Lebanon, living in Qatar, living in, uh, mm. in uh, all over the Arabic countries, mm. all of the mm. Islamic world. Mm. Look at how modern they are. Yeah. Look how upgraded they are. Yeah. Why are we Afghans stick to going backwards thousands of years? Yeah. Why how a woman has to be covered? So we don't even see their faces. Yeah. We don't see. Uh, so it does not mean that. Uh, yes, you can wear a scarf, but your face could show also. Mm. But burqa is not a must to have fully covered your face that yeah. nothing shows. And this ideology of them uh, uh, conflicts with all the modern women of Afghanistan mm. because now women understand their rights. They yeah. know their Absolutely. freedoms. Absolutely. They're not going to let this uh, group with their ideology try to uh, block them or stop them from uh, their way of living. It's their way of living, yeah. exactly. Another point I wanted to add, why also Afghan women oppose mm. um, the foreign dress code is because we believe Afghan clothing is already modest. Mm. It's um, appropriate for Islamic way of dressing mm -hmm. up. Uh, there's no point, there's no reason that it needs to be wiped out. And it's not as some people claim that it's a Western invention and it's only was um, made in the West and then it, uh, promoted in Afghanistan. It's actually the other way. Those mm. clothing were made in Afghanistan. So where that's where the Western Afghans, the diaspora, take the clothes. And there's no, it's also our identity uh, mm. and also it's not, there's no necessity to change it. Yeah. So why do you think the Taliban want to regulate what women are wearing? Uh, again, it goes back to control. They want to control women. Um, they want to make women invisible. It's all, as I said, mm. um, wiping them out of society, mm. erasing them from society. Even more like uh, more uh, to uh, get detail to get about this. Uh, for example, let, let's look about Pakistan. Mm. Look how women in Pakistan are dressed. Yeah. Look, they're not all covered up no, fully. No, gorgeous. There's all of them. Their faces are open. Yeah. Everything is fine in Pakistan. What's in Afghanistan now? Mm. These Taliban's are the same people who studied inside Pakistan. Mm. Inside, studied, they got their ideologies from inside there. So why don't they s um, activate there, mm. they commit it there, they do it mm. there before they come into Afghanistan and mm. then telling our people what to wear and how to treat themselves? Mm. No, fair enough. And I absolutely yeah. love the way you said that, that they're trying to make them invisible, which is an absolutely amazing way to put it. So speaking of Canada, speaking of home and our home front, I want to get your opinion on the role Canadian government has played in context of what is going on in Afghanistan. So do you think the Canadian government's efforts for evacuation, Afghan refugee intake, and raising voices for human rights has been sufficient and efficient? After all this protest that we have done, since we were the starter of this, all this movement from mm. the youth, 
Yeah. And uh, we raised our voice from uh, starting August 1st until now. Mm. We have seen uh, uh, achievements. We have That's seen, great. for example, how Canada's government right away reacted and uh, right away they called out 20,000 people. Mm. And uh, they send their word, they send their help. We asked then our team, Afghan Youth Movement of Canada, after um, uh, August 15th protests, mm -hmm. when I was personally speaking in front of CBC News reporters, I uh, sent a message that we do, we want the government, Canadian government, to not recognize Taliban government mm. because they are illegal government mm. and they are not who we want to be represented as. And the next day, it was announced that the, the Canadian government did announce that, and which was good. Mm. We do appreciate their help in any way. And uh, right now, we have our refugees coming here in yeah. Toronto. There are three, four different uh, hotels. They are being yeah. taken care of by Afghan Canadian uh, response. Mm -hmm. And our members, our team members, or and other organizations of Toronto, they're all helping. They're all sending donations. They're all helping with the packings yeah. and delivering it to the hotels, which we all took parts. Absolutely. So. Uh, we appreciate all this, but this is not really enough because yeah. there's more into that 20,000 people. Yeah. There's more really like how many people already came from mm. Afghanistan? Probably not many, uh, mm. not a lot. Not, yeah. like not 1,000 or something, sure. yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Not but as now 000. we know people that there, w I know personally people that who are with Canadian passports since at Kabul right now. Mm. So we're in contact with them. We see what's happening. Mm. We need it more. It needs to be more happening yeah. in Canada since it's a democratic, free, loving yeah. country or lo loving by all. and diverse country that everybody sees himself part of his country part of mm. his home and we expect them to pay attention a little bit more and then mm. help our people more than this because i'm pretty sure they can do it fair enough but i guess i want to ask you then what else would you like to see the government do other than the obviously fill in the 20k that they've promised right now uh, that's the first thing first to take out all the canadians as soon as possible mm. from Afghanistan, yeah. and mm. uh, try to help those who work for Canadians, even though they're not Canadians. Mm. Take out those whose lives are in danger, mm. who work for the National Army of Afghanistan, yeah. who work for these Western countries, mm. their families are under threat, and those who, 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 are will, who are waiting for their doors to get knocked mm. by these Taliban to take revenge on them. And yeah. they're inside their houses, they have nowhere to go, they don't have money to get out of the country, they don't have money to send their families out of the country. Mm. And um, besides that, we would want the, now that there is a resistant national national resistance starting in Afghanistan mm. under the leadership of Ahmad Massoud and Panjshir, mm -hmm. this is the next thing that we're focused on that we government needs to support that mm. because that's the only movement by the people of Afghanistan who the vice president of Afghanistan is there. The first hand man of President mm -hmm. Amrullah Saleh is mm. in Panjshir Valley with national hero of Afghanistan, Ahmad Massoud mm -hmm. and their allies and the generals and the forces that they were in Afghanistan and who run from the Taliban to hide in Panjshir, they're resistant. So now we have to help them. We have to help the resistance movement to mm. grow the resistance movement mm. so they see that there's outside powers. Help them with food, help them with money, sending aid mm. so they could survive, they could stand and they could uh, resist this group. So yeah. other provinces, <laughs> other people are now uprising. They could see that the West, uh, there's a country who's backing up these people yeah. and then we're not just giving the uh, Afghanistan to the hands of terrorist organization mm. that's under ISI Pakistan. Yeah. We want Afghanistan to be in the hand of Afghan people. Yeah, absolutely. So therefore, we need to stand on the side of Afghan people and support them. Yeah. This is one of the main things that the Canadian politicians, just like uh, I fully want to send my greetings and uh, to uh, Chris Alexander. Mm. We follow him. I personally met him on like, September 11th. We had an event. He came. He gave a great speech. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need more Canadians to speak up like him, speak yeah. about the reality of Afghanistan. Mm. And uh, we need more politicians to get involved, to raise their voice, to ask uh, the international community to stand in Panjshir, to mm. stand in Panjshir and support the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, yeah. which is standing for the freedom of Afghanistan, which is standing, uh, and those people are resisting for women's rights. Yeah. Those people are uh, fighting for freedom. Those people are fighting for their human rights. Those people are fighting for their values. They're fighting mm. against occupiers. They're people who are coming from other countries. Not only Afghanistan, they're coming from outside of Afghanistan, mm. from Af uh, and their fighters are as you know, Taliban fighters are from yeah. Pakistan, from Peshawar, from, from Waziristan, yeah. from Uzbekistan, from other neighboring countries yeah. too. So therefore, um, we need the uh, Western country, Western community to stand with the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan and speak about it and show support. 
that way we could uh, our people could have faith and have mm. hope that we yeah. will, uh, there's somebody that will kick this terrorist out yeah. of Afghanistan. No, that's true. A little bit, a little bit of support goes a really long way. Right. So I want to ask you, what would you like to see the Canadian government do to stand up against the oppression that Afghan women are facing? We can do first of all is recognize it that there is a problem. There is um, attack against Afghan women. Yeah. They are being uh, oppressed, uh, silenced, erased from society. Canadian government first they can do or international community um, recognize it and be their voice and in, uh, inform other international community to stand up for them. And then the other thing um, that they can do is uh, hold Pakistan or other countries that are involved accountable. Mm. So once the that stops, that will solve a lot of issues, not only oppression against women, but also against minorities, against um, children, men, women, everyone. Mm. Is there anything else you would want our viewers to know about what is what we already talked about, but anything else you want to add on to that we didn't touch? Uh, we covered most of the important <laughs> points, but uh, we want our viewers to um, stand in solidarity with Afghanistan, yeah. people of Afghanistan, and don't forget us. Uh, in the end, we're all uh, living in the same region. We're yeah. all fighting terrorism. We don't want war in any country. We don't want any innocent blood or innocent person to lose their lives over this. But we're all here fighting. Uh, the, uh, our goal is the same thing. We're all here to fight terrorism and fight their sponsors. And uh, we need our neighbor ca neighboring countries to support us, to support the people of Afghanistan so we could uh, join hands together and fight this until we free Afghanistan. Mm. Anything you'd like to add? Oh yeah, the other thing is uh, the message that Afghan women are expressing um, is very clear. They want basic human rights. Um, and a lot of countries, especially neighboring countries, they misinterpret that. They say that Afghan women want Western lifestyle, that they want an, an Islamic lifestyle, they want to take off their hijab or live like people in USA or Canada. That's not what they're asking for. Mm. They're asking for basic human rights, yeah. for respect, for dignity, for to be able to work pursue education, support their family, not be forced um, into marriages, anything mm -hmm. li like that. So a lot of people are misinterpreting it on, I don't know if it's misunderstanding or, is, or if it's on purpose, that needs to stop. They're silencing their voices actually. Thank you guys. I want to thank, thank you guys you. for joining me. Thank you. I know it must cool. be a really hard topic for you guys to talk about. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank You're you for having us. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. This is Simone Ivani, and you're watching the International News Channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date on all of the latest news.